car driving all around. A couple of pit stops being made, one by Roberto Moreno, who you ride with, and also it looked to me as though Dario came in as well. Remember, these guys were on a different strategy because they uh, stopped out of sequence earlier on. And also, one of the Brahma cars coming in, and that's likely to be Raul Bozzell, I would think, but I couldn't quite see which car it was. Greg Moore has been in as well. There is, uh, yep, it was Raul Bozzell just coming out of the pits as well. No, it wasn't it? Was Scott Pruitt, sorry. Scott Pruitt, the championship leader, lying down in 12th place, yep. who was into the pits then. Nothing to lose there. He was the last guy on that, on that second, one lap down, so a good move by the Brahma team. Riding on board with Jimmy Vassar. Jimmy's having a very quiet afternoon, but he's there in fifth place. And uh, he's finished every race in the points so far in the championship this year. Always Mr. Consistent, that's how he won the series last year. Hasn't had quite the same pace though this year. His uh, best result, I think, a fifth place so far this year. The rest of the time he's been, only just been in the points. But again, he's, he's stayed out of trouble here today, hasn't he, Jeremy, so far? You know, he knows, how, he knows what it takes now to win a championship. He's done that. Uh, he did it last year. He's now finished, I think it's 20 races in a row that car has finished. Remarkable remarkable effort there by Grant Weaver's uh, crew and uh, you know Jimmy Vass has had a couple of strong runs, he was actually third of course wasn't he at home set the first race of the season, had a little bit of bad luck uh, in several of the races but he's been right there thereabouts again you know he's a he's a shrewd young man is Jimmy Vassar he's not the most flamboyant of characters perhaps at least in the, in the public eye uh, but uh, he, he's, a, he's, he's matured greatly as a driver and he knows what it takes to win a championship you have to finish all the races Patrick Carpentier into the Bettenhausen pit been a bit of a disappointing afternoon for the French Canadian after that superb qualifying effort to be third on the grid here and various problems have seen him drop back down the order so he's now in 15th place but we'll hear a lot more from Carpentier as we go through the rest of this season. I've no doubt about that. Little break. Okay, yep, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's going well. Hey, Bert. How are you doing? Good. Glad to hear it. No breaks. Okay, good. It's a good race, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that'll be great. Michael versus Paul. Good stuff. And don't forget Al. Yeah, and Al in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Okay. being given the one I think we're going to go back green guys at the end of this okay lap number 189 we're on now as Paul Tracy leads the field around behind the pace car it looks as though we're getting ready to go green flag racing once again as the battle between Paul Tracy Michael Andretti and Alonso Jr. will be rejoined they've got Gilles de Ferrand behind them as well Tracy just weaves around a little bit to get a bit of heat into the tyres. He will control the pace of the restart. He hits the throttle. All 800 brake horsepower goes down to the road and out of turn three he comes onto the green flag. Tracy leads from Andretti. But what now can Michael do about getting past the Penske and taking over the lead of this race? part with a cut tyre, he had to make an early pit stop, but the Swift chassis has just been superb here this afternoon, so again has the Penske, and it's now a battle between two of the top teams in the championship, the Penske team and the Newman Haas team, it's going to be a battle to the wire. Well look how much they pulled away from uh, Alonso Jr on that lap, a second and a half on that one lap, that's, uh, that's very interesting indeed, these two are very very closely matched, and uh, Andretti I think he'll be uh, biding his time, he'll try and stay close to the Penske, every time the pence has gone out it's been quick right off the box as soon as the green light shows Paul is on the gas right away he can run a very very fast pace instantly but when he comes up to the traffic that's when it seems to even out a little bit and that's when Michael Andretti's extra experience could begin to tell in his final 45 or so laps oh Tracy certainly so laps, uh, sorry, yeah that's all right 35 laps to go but certainly very very uh, 
on the limit there, Tracy, but you can see he's just managed to open up that advantage a little bit as he was... Oh, we've got another yellow flag. Big Richie accident, Hearn. Richie Hearn, Parker Johnston. Oh, another car spinning in avoidance. Roberto Moreno has spun in avoidance at the back of that, but it's re there's Roberto. He simply spun uh, to, to avoid the wrecked cars as they came out of turn three, but the other cars of Richie Hearn and Parker Johnston much more heavily involved. It's Parker Johnston's car from the left is the white and green car, and down on the inside, he's come down onto the pit lane entrance, is the car of Richie Hearn, that's the red and white car. So that really throws a spanner in the works, it means that we'll have to have another restart. This is going to be a long yellow flag, I would imagine, because we've got 33 laps to go. Remember, each of the laps will count as they go round behind the pace car. Every lap will still count towards the race distance, and they'll go nice and slowly now, because they don't really want to come back round to that area until they have to. Roberto Moreno should be able to be push started once again. He'll be gotten out of the way fairly quickly. I don't think he actually hit anything, but it's the other car of Parker Johnston and Richie Hearn that will cause the problems. Give me a push, says Roberto there, and uh, the, can we see the incident there? Woo, Parker oh, Johnston dear. climbing up the wall there. Boy, that's a nasty uh, looking. It's a great shame. Those two are both doing a good job. Richie Hearn, there's a couple of people squeezing through. Greg Moore, was that uh, Raul Boisel, I think, on the grass missing those two, or Scott Pruitt, one of the two. Let's uh -huh. take another another view. Let's see. Parker Johnston and Richie Hearn we're looking for. And uh, they spun. Well, in fact, Parker spun it first, didn't he? Parker had lost it. Richie had absolutely nowhere to go but to hit the car. And Parker did a sort of uh, wall of death act around the outside on the concrete wall. And how everyone else managed to miss them was absolutely amazing. Uh, we got a written interview with Richie. I was just an uh, innocent victim. Yeah, I... Parker should have let everybody go by a long time ago because I think he was a lap down and, and yeah, I just got caught out, so. Sometimes that happens, guys. He's on his way to the Cart Medical Center for the mandatory check. Let's take another look at that uh, incident again from a different angle, well, from the angle we were just looking at just now. Again, you watch the white and green car losing it, losing it. Bang! In comes Richie Hearn. He was on the brakes, but it was just nothing he could do. And what a brilliant job the other guys behind them did. Roberto locked up and spun, but apart from that let's let's see it from Roberto's car in fact he was battling up there with one of the Brahma cars and then suddenly it all happens ahead of him on the brakes slowing down locks up gets on the grass <laughs> got his hands in a bit of a mess and that's the reason that he spun it in the end but uh, well there wasn't an awful lot he could do about that no indeed so with Parker Johnston's car sitting there smoking away still some way to go in this race Clear up the mess after Parker Johnson and Richie Hearns shun. It certainly did look as though there may have been a little bit of contact between Raul Bazell and uh, Parker Johnson in that accident. But thankfully, they've got it pretty much cleared up now. Yeah, but Raul Bazell there diving down the inside going into turn three. Didn't really look like he was quite alongside him, did he? Uh, Parker Johnson shut the door. Contact at that stage inevitable, unfortunately. Um, and the, the, just a phenomenal save, wasn't it, from Raul Boisel? I think uh, we're getting ready for the restart here. The track is all cleared up finally. Yes. And we'll have, uh, what, a 19-lap dash to the finish. It's Hold a fascinating battle, yeah. We've got 19 laps of racing under green. Hopefully, if there's not a yellow, another yellow flag, let's, uh, let's hope there's not another yellow, because we'd love to see the battle go right down to the wire. The reports from the, the radios of the various teams are that Paul Tracy's happy with his car in clean air when he's not having to deal with other traffic. Michael is much happier with his car in traffic. It's not so good in clean air. We'll soon find out who's got the best car because they're coming around to get this race underway. 19 laps to go here in Nazareth and Andretti's right on Tracy's tail as they get under racing conditions again. Alonso Junior in third place, but just watch this battle for the lead now. Fabulous stuff here. Michael Andretti, he's, uh, there he is changing up into the next gear, sixth gear probably, uh, going down the back straight away, all over the back of Paul Tracy. Tracy very good through turn three, gets a good run, able to put on a little bit of breathing space. That's what he needs at this stage in the game. This is a real pressure situation now for both of these drivers. Paul Tracy leading the race, looking for the first Penske win for a long, long time. No race victories during the 1996 season at all. Michael Andretti, on the other hand, would love to take victory in his hometown race. And also because he lies third in the championship and he wants to try and get into the championship lead and escape the clutches of the likes of Scott Pruitt and Alex Zanardi, who are not going to score well here today. Tenth place for Pruitt at the moment. Eleventh place for Alex Zanardi. Andretti has a 
great opportunity here to win this race and get some more points but Paul Tracy is going to do everything in his power to keep the Swift chassis behind him we've got uh, just 16 laps to go now of the one mile oval they're lapping it around 20 seconds so it's only about five minutes worth of racing can Paul Tracy hold on to this lead is Michael Andretti going to dive through in the last few stages and are they going to get into any traffic before the end of the race very little steering wheel movement there isn't there from Michael Andretti that car is handling absolutely perfectly 20.1 that's that that lap for both these two Michael Andretti so smooth there on the wheel when they come up to the traffic that's going to tell the tale I think between these two drivers with now just 20 what 15 laps to go Paul Tracy looking for his first win with Penske since he came back from uh, Newman Haas. Of course, he was teammate to Michael Andretti just a couple of years ago in the 1995 season. Took a, t a couple of wins that year, but that was his last victory. The Michigan race in 1995 was the last win for Paul Tracy. He desperately wants to take the maximum points here today. Back with Penske into the second year. And can he keep his former teammate behind him in the remaining 13 laps to go? Third place is still Alonso Jr., but he's some 3.9 seconds behind this battle as Andretti gets closer, closer, closer still as they come up towards turn three. Yeah, it's not an easy place to pass this as uh, Michael Andretti is finding out. He's uh, he's passed a lot of cars around here in the past uh, few years. Can he get past Paul Tracy? It's going to be awfully difficult. Uh, he knows his car is it's just handling absolutely like a dream, but so is Paul Tracy's. They're matching lap times. 20.4 last time around. Absolutely nothing between them. Fantastic stuff between these two then. Tracy and Andretti come round to complete another lap and they're soon going to be up behind Roberto Moreno. He's at the back of the next, next little group. Now this might give Michael Andretti that opportunity that he's been looking for. We've already heard over the radio that Tracy's not so happy with his car in traffic. This is where the pressure really starts to tell on Tracy. Can he get past Moreno without losing too much? Oh, Roberto Moreno, so that's a disgraceful piece of driving. He pulled over there to try and block Paul Tracy coming out of turn four. There's no need for for that whatsoever at this level I think that was a bad move right by Roberto Moreno Paul Tracy all credit to him kept his cool took the inside line was able to fly past Moreno it's well off the pace here and uh, and the position is unchanged so thank goodness that would not have been the way to settle this motor race no don't forget Moreno his teammate Michael Andretti they've both got held up behind Greg Moore there and Tracy took the wide line Andretti had to take the wide line as well fantastic this is just incredible who is going to take the victory out of these two another car to get past up on the right hand side I think it's Dario Franchitti that they're going past now Dario running in 13th position and that's given Paul Tracy just a little bit of breathing space he's pushing so hard he's running brave we know the car doesn't like running in the traffic so well but in fact if anything he's gained through that little bit of traffic that they just had to deal with and that just shows you how determined Paul Tracy is to hold on to this victory we've just got eight laps to go Jeremy eight laps to go now and Paul Tracy's still got a few more cars to deal with yeah there's one of the Toyotas right ahead of him now it's one Fangio oh dear me Fangio turns in the corner you, don't need, you really don't have any choice of that corner there you've got to take the line through that corner now Fangio pulls over good move by the Argentinian can answer, answer? no Andretti not able to make a move there Paul Tracy held the line through the corner comes off the corner well no room there for Michael Andretti Michael even tried changing down a gear there they've got a uh, sort of choice of top gears that they can run and he changed down to try and get a bit more off the corner but it wasn't enough so Andretti still sits in second place a little bit of clean air for another lap or two but there are only six laps to go as they come around last lap was a 21.8 let's see what this lap is 21 as they cross the line 21 20.5 and a 20.4 from Andretti a tenth of a second faster than Tracy on that last lap he's closed up again fractionally but down through turn two that's where Tracy can just eke away the advantage very very slightly Tracy just whoa, he goes right out towards the wall on the exit of turn three another lap completed just four laps to go just over a minute's racing now and Paul Tracy now beginning to feel that maybe it is going to be victory for him and Penske Michael Andretti is going to have to pull something really really special out of the bag now to take the victory yeah I think this is uh, that's not I think that's beyond him uh, uh, Paul Tracy is driving absolutely beautifully next ahead of him on the road about 100 yards ahead is Scott Pruitt who is running in 10th place uh, but uh, it's a tall order for Michael Andretti he's only got a couple of laps to do it oh and there's a blow up one of the Toyotas has blown up as he comes past turn three there'll be a yellow flag out for sure it's the race it's the race to the line now it's the oh. race to the line oh and he's just 
just Paul Tracy, I think, has just won it because it will be a yellow flag to the chequered flag now. And why? Oh, Tracy backed off so early. Yeah, the yellow was out, so you can't pass on the yellow flag. Uh, and Michael Andretti realised that. So uh, uh, it, it's not like NASCAR where you 